Jurassic James and Jurassic Explains looking at Eocacaria. So it's another new one from the Jurassic World uh, Dino Trackers line. Uh, when I first saw it, I knew exactly what it was. I was like, great, grab it. But I know for many of you, you're like, what is this? This is an unusual animal. And I admit they are going, they get out of weird, unusual species. But um, unfortunately, this is the only, or unfortunately, I don't know. This is the only Eocacaria toy or model or figure that I know of. So here we are. So same rules apply. I'm going to take the official scissors of Jurassic James. And it knows it's, it's no, it knows birth time is happening. It's being born into a, a world. What a world! There, let's see. So let's see what I take this out. I do find it interesting that it has uh, feathers. I know many people who do reconstruction art kind of these on these figures. They really appreciate that and show it in a in a, in a winter esque environment. That's, there we go. The tail is always separate. So, same thing as everyone else, there is a, very sensitive. So you plug it in like that, and you just use the force, and the top has the, this darker color, the bottom is less, so, so it's like a, it's interesting that they have some Tyrannosaur relatives, so we know many Tyrannosaur relatives have feathers, and this one, I'm not saying it didn't, but there's no proof of it, because they, oh, oh, here's why. They only found a few face bones in the face, like the ridge right here of the eye, like this. So, the question then is, how do you know what it is based on this? Well, the name tells everything. Eo Kakaria means, Eo means dawn, like Eo Raptor, Eo Thene, the dawn of recent. So, Eo means dawn, and Kakaria means shark tooth, because there's a dinosaur from a later time in the same general region, well, not same region, but Africa, called Kakaridatosaurus. So this is essentially a descendant of the Allosaurus line. The Carcharodontosaurus are, are like the Allosaurus in some ways replacements over time. And so they're known from Africa, South America, well, Africa as in Carcharodontosaurus, uh, Portugal, we have Concavenator, we have one in, well, a couple in South America, uh, you may have heard of them, uh, Gigodosaurus, Mapusaurus. So Carcharodontosaurus was covered by Paul Serino, and so was Eococara. So the idea is that this is, um, and I'll tell you why in time scale it matters so much, but in general, when early paleontologists were looking for fossils and they were finding things, they had to compare them to modern, modern animals. So for example, you find a thoropod, a predatory dinosaur, and what animals walk on two legs? Well, humans, but we're really weird. So you compare them to maybe, I don't know, ostriches, kangaroos, things like that. So if you see the early pictures, you see these kangaroo-like bodies on the dinosaurs because that's what we have the base on. Well, nowadays we have lots and lots of species known. And lots, lot, lots of, not only, indiv not only individuals, but populations or in, in that, so we can compare them. And enough of the skeleton was there that Serena's like, yeah, this is a, Paul Serena's like, this is a Carcarnosaur ancestor, basically. So it's, or if not direct ancestor, it's a relative. Um, so in general, looking at the animal, the first thing that stands out, which is, I love, is the hands, uh, the forelimbs. They are essentially, they're not quite, like, they, they haven't given up the Jurassic World, like, this, but they're kind of getting to the palm of the palm we see in reality. The feet, there are three toes at the front, which is very good, and one toe in the back. In general, this extra padded part here, there was a pad on the foot, we see in the footprints, from predatory dinosaurs. But this is a little bigger than it was probably in real life, because engineering is a toy. It's still to stand, right? Nothing is worse than a toy that won't stand. So, uh, let's see, as far as its gimmicks and stuff, if you pull this little, this little knot right there, you slip your fingernail in there and pull it out, and there's a DNA code. Uh, this one, this new wave, they, like this, the Diabloceratops and the Dryptosaurus from last couple weeks, if you turn it sideways, uh, for me, for me personally, I don't really care about that part. I just, like, I just want another new species, right? Uh, as usual, the tail is too small. It's big enough to help balance. I, I do give them that credit, but it doesn't feel like it's full size, it, what it could have been. Uh, the skull, I mean, again, and I say that not that we have a tail of this animal, but we know the size of thoropods and their features and their uh, portions. They only found, again, like the ridge up here on top, which is ironic. It's like the one thing they found in a real animal. So the real animals have like bumps and rugos on it, which implies some kind of extra growth, some kind of horny material maybe to put on the over the eye to help, help uh, uh, communicate to others, you know, that feature there. This guy doesn't really seem to have any extra parts there, but they essentially found some fish bones, basically. So, here's why, so first and foremost, it's living in uh, about 100, in, you know, like, early, well, I'll say this, it's early Cretaceous, it's living in, in Africa, and its neighbors are these guys. So actually, four, three of its neighbors 
have already been sold in the Jurassic World line. So you may have heard of Sucosarcus. So this animal lived with Sucosarcus. These are contemporaries, same time, same locality. Again, the importance of this is if you look at these things, well, you, you, I mean, I love the online pictures. Where you'll see prehistoric Jurassic World crit critters fighting and doing things. And again, in the Jurassic World universe, they're all at the same time. But if you are doing a time scale uh, proper look at it, those animals aren't living in the same time period. And so here we have a chance to see that one-on-one. -on -one. These guys were side by side. They interacted. Uh, we have here the Sucomimus, which means croc mimic. I think I did a video on this already. Oh, or did I not? I don't know. I have no idea. So here's the Sucomimus right here. Uh, and we have uh, one of my favorites, the Uranosaurus, which I only have one. I want to buy more of these things. But again, the Uranosaurus is a relative of the duckbills, uh, you know, hadrosaur form. But it has a large neural spines in its back, very much like the uh, Spinosaurus. And of course, the dinosaur that Jurassic World did make, called Nigerosaurus from Niger, Africa. And they're really known because Paul Serino did research on them, and their mouths have these, like these vacuum cleaner mouths. Uh, so, like, so this is a descendant of the Diplodocus line. And it's kind of like when you see the Diplodocus, their heads are turning more like this, like they're evolving towards that low grazing style. So, Nigerosaurus, Sucomimus, Aranosaurus, Eococaria, and Sucomimus are all contemporaries. These animals are all in the same environment, same time, same place. So you're building your prehistoric zoo, essentially, of this set time right here. Now, why, why, do they, why do they stand out? Why do they matter so much? Well, here's the thing. I'm going to show you they, their replacements. What I mean is we have early Cretaceous, early to mid Cretaceous, and then the late Cretaceous group. And so Eococaria is essentially replaced over time with Carcarnosaurus. Now, you say, well, the, the easiest thing you would think is, well, that evolved into this. And that's what we, the name implies, that Serena's implying that. But in general, I can't say for sure that this would evolve into that one because we have other candidates, well, they're unknown fossils. And so, in general, it's in the same family, it's very similar features, but we don't know for sure, not with what we have, the limited fossils we have. So, same thing we said, Sucomimus is right here, and it is relative of Spinosaurus. So, it can be argued that Sucomimus evolved in Spinosaurus, but people sometimes argue against that. But these guys have similar roles in the environment, right? So, we have Aranosaurus in this time, and lo and behold, there's Aranosaurus in Electrotaceous too. So, I just have different figures. This is a non Jurassic world one. This is Geo World Aranosaurus. There was not a year. There is no year. But it's made in China, so there you go. So this animal's across that time frame. And sometimes we do see species extend beyond this one region. So Sucosarcus is replaced. Now, as far as it, it's amphibious, it's amph not amphibian, not a frog or salamander. It's living in the water on land kind of thing. Caprosuchus, which is a warthog croc, that's a different kind of croc in that environment. Let me push these guys back. So, Nigerosaurus is replaced, and we have, now this is dangerously underscaled, a Paralititan, which is a very large sauropod. Think of uh, our friend Dragonus. It's one of those kind of big, long neck animals. There's a new group, another group, not new, but a group that aren't very well known, called Rabichisaurus. They are essentially a branch of sauropod. Uh, this one is known for its tall neural spines and sail. Uh, other toys that we see from Spinosaurus time, but not in this time yet are the, is the Rugops. Now Rugops, now this is one, it's from Jurassic World, and I did a video on this, and I, I just, I deleted the video. I didn't even post it. I was just so disappointed. This figure has two fingers. A bell, it's a Nabellosaur. I'm sorry, I didn't say that. So I've been talking about the Rajasaurus and the Genosaurus, all those Abelosaurus, Scorpion, Venator. Yeah, so it's one of those guys. And it was, it's a, the figure is a smaller mold, but Rajasaurus would have at least four fingers, three fingers. It's only two. The tail is absolutely pathetic. This this figure, like, it's just though, are they trying to punish me? What did I do wrong? But the idea is that I'm so sorry. But the idea is that this one is just like a really bad. It can't even stand up properly. That, that just anyway. So Ruga, but I do have a real Rugop, so not a real Rugop, so we have better Rugop's model. And I, I I compared the two in the video, but it was just so negative. I just was. I deleted it. But if you want to see that video, let me know in the comments if you thought it was interesting. want to hear that story. Uh, and then, of course, we have Delta Dromius. So there's no equivalent on the side. So what we're seeing is early Cretaceous, late Cretaceous, and very similar parallels of animals, which is really cool to me because I'm a nerd about these things. Um, but 
in general, Eokokaria, I can't say much about it because we don't know much about it because we only have a few features of it. And it's one of those things where it's annoying because you would say, just well, just keep digging. You'll find something eventually and find more of it. And that's true, we will find more of it over time. I mean, we normally find these guys' teeth first, actually. That's why I first read about it. I heard about the teeth that they would find. Shed teeth, usually. But this guy, uh, as far as the overall design goes, it's, I would say my complaint would be its face that the Karkar Swords, they have very, like, narrow skulls. Uh, you know the ink Acrocanthosaurus in North America? That's there relative as well. And I just, like I said, I don't know, okay, when it comes to dinosaurs with feathers, we see it across, the, we see Silurosaurus, those are the, the, the usually smaller carnosaurs, like raptors and all that, and also the Tyrannosaurus. We see feathers in someone, or Nistrians, uh, so like the Triceratops and Cetacosaurus. So it, it implies that we would see feathers across all dinosaurs. But within Thoropod, you would see them more with the Silurosaurus, the raptor-like. Not so much with this guy, until we find it. So that's why it's just weird that they would give this guy feathers when it lives in this kind of, it lives in a, in, in a different, you know, it's not living in an Arctic environment, this is Africa. Even though it's roughly the same, same location as today, maybe a few hundred miles off the, you know, but it's still in the same region it is today. So that's something that's kind of interesting that they would do it for this and not other dinosaurs, like there are Silurosaurus that are making in this line. But with that being said, it's just still a cool figure, but, right, it does that. I do like, if you're going to have feathers, how the underside is like, not feathered. That's kind of just neat. It's this kind of different scale pattern. Um, overall, cool animal. Like I said, it's something that I was excited. Not so much for the toy itself, although it's pretty decent. But I was excited for the um, the fact that this figure to have a representative of the species in my collection. So that's why it's such a big deal to me. Not so much the figure itself, basically. Um, it's like when someone dates, they're like, I have a boyfriend. What do you know about him? Nothing much, but I have a boyfriend. Like, you're more excited about the fact that it exists than what it actually is, which is unhealthy. But the idea is that's what I like about this guy, is that it has that feet, that, that uh, general look. Also, know when you see dinosaurs with these, like, uh, mohawk tuft of feathers, that's based on uh, a Solarosaurus. You'll see them, like, crushed like this. And have a mohawk. It may not have actually been a mohawk in life, but when it got crushed and deposited, it may have got pushed up. But anyway... That's what I want to say about this guy. It's just interesting to look at. And the eyes are really weird. I, I can show you. The eyes are like they, they're painted on with red with the red line around it. That's just kind of, it just seems really fake to me. I don't know. But overall, decent figure. I like it. I'm not mad at it. I just think it could be, it's just weird that they, anyway. So that being said, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for tuning in. I don't want to say anything.